Kate Stewart is one of Doctor Who's most drastic character arcs. As the head of a unified intelligent task force, otherwise known as a unit, she's one badass capable leader that you'd never want to mess with. Over the years, she fought off foes and put herself in the firing line in some of the most dangerous alien incursions to have ever reached our planet. But with all, she puts the safety of humanity first and herself second. But her life very nearly didn't turn out this adventurous. Sorry about the raucous entrance. Spike in Artron energy reading at this address. In the light of the last 24 hours, we had to check it out, and uh, the dogs do love a run out. Hello. Kate Stewart, head of scientific research at UNIT. And with dress sense like that. You must be the doctor. Greetings, everyone. I'm Jack, and welcome to Tardis Central. Whilst for many, Kate is a face first familiar from Doctor Who Series 7, The Power of Three. Her on-screen activities and history within the Hooniverse actually date back to the height of the wilderness years. In this week's Doctor Who Explained video, which is our series taking you through Doctor Who to be ready for the 60th anniversary and beyond, we learn about Kate Stewart. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from a team here at Tardis Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Doctor Who universe. But let us know what you think down below in the comment section. As mentioned at one point, Doc 2 was not in active production. During this time, Kate had her first appearance in the Doc 2 expanded media film, Downtime. Let's take a look at Kate's journey and find out how she became one of the Doctor's greatest allies, a fierce defender of the universe and all around Doctor Who icon. Catherine Sally Lethbridge Stewart, or Kate as she's known to most, is the daughter of Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. Growing up, Kate knew nothing about her dad's work at UNIT, protecting the Earth from extraterrestrial threats with the help of the Doctor. Her mother, Fiona, alongside her father, ensured that her childhood was relatively sheltered from the truth. But the huge amount of time and work that the Brigadier had to put under UNIT put a severe strain on his relationship with Fiona. As Kate grew older, Fiona blamed Alistair for the reason their family broke apart, and because of this, Kate grew estranged from her dad. In 1989, Kate left home and went to college but her academic hopes fell apart when she fell pregnant. When Jonathan, the father of Kate's child, would try to marry her a few years later, she would also turn him down and give birth in 1990 to a son, Gordon. Two years later, Kate and Jonathan split up, leaving Kate alone to look after Gordon, who she would nickname Gordy in later life. In 1995, Kate would find herself reconnected with her father when caught up in the plans for a great intelligence. Kate and Gordy would find themselves stalked by students from New World University. The students were themselves being used by the intelligence in its bid to try and enslave humanity once more. Feeling worried about the behaviour of the students, Kate contacted her father, and what would happen would drastically change the course of her life. When they meet, Kate would confront her father about the breakdown of the relationship between him and her mother. The Brigadier insists that he can't explain the truth and is attacked by the New World students. Over time, they discovered that Kate possessed a locus that the intelligence was after, only for a yeti to escape with it. Yes, a yeti, you really need to watch it. Amongst all of this, Kate finally had to reveal to her father that he had a grandson. Over the following years, Kate found herself dipping in and out of her father's world. In 2003, she confronted Masto, the daemon with Cavendish, and then a year later, the two of them called upon her dad to help when Gordy was kidnapped from his 14th birthday party, along with his cousin, Connell. These events helped Kate realise that she was destined for something more than a quiet life. Despite going back to academia and studying at a university, moving into a house and marrying a new man, and having another child sometime after 2011, Kate felt there was something more to be done in her life. Right to the end of his life, her father would insist that the doctor might return to visit him in his nursing home. To avoid favours in the application process, she would simply use the name Kate Stewart a surefire way to distance herself from her father's legacy and carve her own path. Working hard at the organisation over the following months, she would rise to the position of Chief Scientific Officer. Once she had cemented her reputation and hard work in UNIT, she began the difficult job of reshaping it in her own unique way, with science put at the forefront. UNIT's been adapting. Well, I dragged them along, kicking and screaming, which, which made it sound like more fun than it actually was. Little did she know that fate would soon bring her into the Doctor's life when the Earth was invaded by mysterious cubes, as part of the Shakrai's year-long slow invasion. Following traces of Atron energy at the time, Kate would burst into the house of Amy Pond and Roy Williams, finding both them and the 11th Doctor. 
They meet again at the Tower of London after each of the cues begin to display unique behaviour. It's here where the Doctor realises who Kate actually is and tells her. Why did you drop Lethbridge? I didn't want any favours. Though he guided me, even to the end. Science leads, he always told me. He said he'd learnt that from an old friend. We don't let him down. We don't let this planet down. Over time it would follow, it would eventually become apparent that the cubes had been deliberately made interesting so they would become embedded in Earth society. Though the Shackware would attempt to spring the trap, Kate and the Doctor were able to get the word out, saving most people from being disabled by them when the Doctor set about handling the Shakurai, basically telling the ship hiding above Earth to go away. With the threat being ended by the destruction of the Shakurai ship, off the Doctor and the Pons would go, but not before Kate would get to bid him farewell. Eventually, Kate would be reunited with the 11th Doctor. Having spotted the TARDIS, she ordered unit troops to seize it by helicopter. Kate thought she was doing well, as she'd assumed it would be sitting alone whilst the Doctor was elsewhere doing his usual things. As such, you can imagine her surprise when the Doctor phoned her up to tell her that he was still inside it when they picked up the phone. Whoops. With the TARDIS taken to the National Gallery, and the Doctor thankfully still in one piece, Kate briefed the Doctor on why she'd brought the TARDIS there. Meeting with the Doctor in and around November 2013, when she had the TARDIS seized by helicopter and transported to the National Gallery, Kate tells the Doctor he's been brought in on orders of a crown and gives him a sealed envelope from Queen Elizabeth I. With the Doctor intrigue, she takes him into the gallery and shows him paintings whose glass has been broken from the inside. As it turns out, Zygons had escaped from the inside of her paintings and begin taking the humans as their doubles. While the Doctor is drawn back through time to meet his past incarnations, Clara remains in the present with Kate. The two of them head to the Black Archive, where some of the most dangerous extraterrestrial artifacts have been locked away. The place is so secret that staff face constant mind wipes, and even Clara has been in once before, but just doesn't remember. This one. First day here. Been here ten years. But you let me in. You have a top level security rating from your last visit. Sorry. My what? Apologies. We have to screen all his known associates, can't have information about the Doctor and the TARDIS falling into the wrong hands. Once inside, they find Captain Jack's Vortex Manipulator, and Kate reveals herself to be a Zygon who has taken on her form to gain access to a top secret location. Kate and her Zygon double lock themselves in the Black Archive, and Kate activates a failsafe that was created for the Archive if everything goes wrong, because of course it would, it's Doctor Who. There's a bomb underneath them which would detonate to save London from alien incursions. Both the real and Zygon Kate are forced to negotiate, but neither wants to. It's only when the Doctor's return and a reminder that they once made the wrong decision and killed a lot of people to save a lot more, that they hesitate. It still doesn't change their minds, so the Doctor triggers a mind wipe, leaving the Zygons and humans unable to remember who is who. Which is the double and which is the original. This prompts them both to cancel the destination and negotiate. The next time Kate Stewart and the Doctor meet is even more of a horrendous circumstance. This time, the 12th Doctor is travelling with Clara Oswald, and the Cybermen have launched an invasion alongside the Master, now going by Missy. It's one of the darkest plots ever conceived in Doctor Who, and one that landed writer Stephen Moffat in a bit of creepy hot water. The idea involves bringing back the dead in cyber bodies. Look, it's a little bit creepy, let's be honest. Kate finds the 12th Doctor and Missy when she and her unit soldiers swarm them on a busy street and take them into unit custody. While in the unit aircraft, because the Valiant isn't around anymore, Kate confirms that they are in a state of emergency, and there can be one person called upon to take the place as President of the World, and that person is… the Doctor. During the flight, the plane is attacked by Cybermen. When the side of the aircraft is ripped off, Kate is pulled right out through the hole. We spend the entire episode completely horrified that Kate was so brutally killed off, just like Osgood moments before. Luckily, Kate's fate wasn't to be as sad. Instead, she was rescued by her father, who had returned from a grave in a cyber body. Bit creepy. Around this time, Kate also teams up with the 12th Doctor and Clara in comic form to defeat the Fractures and the Hyperions. The Fractures, a parasitic creature from a void, are easily defeated. To prepare for the brutal battle ahead, Kate had to appoint the Doctor President of the World again. Meanwhile, in 2015, all of Earth's aircraft stopped dead in the air, completely frozen in time, and Kate called upon Clara Oswald for help. Arriving swiftly at Unit HQ, another version, Clara was briefed on the situation by Kate and soon deduced that this was not part of an attack, an invasion, or something sinister. It was a cry for attention from none other than Missy, who had escaped their previous encounter and needs help to find the Doctor. 
Later that same year, Kate was caught up in a Zygon war after a group of rebels broke the terms of the Operation Double. The peace treaty was designed to keep peace between the humans and Zygons. Discovering that Osgood had been kidnapped and the location of every Zygon is stolen, Kate leaps into action. At first she's determined to end the war by bombing the rogues, but the Doctor refuses, saying he'll radicalise more of them if she does. Instead, Kate heads to the town of Truth or Consequences in New Mexico where Osgood was kidnapped. The place is a literal ghost town and Kate explores alone, ready to fight. Eventually she meets the last person living there, a cop. Kate soon learns that the entire town has been murdered and the entire war kicked off when a young Zygon accidentally showed itself in public and scared the public. Kate bluffs everyone by playing up to both sides. It takes some great acting skills to fool everyone and her true self is revealed when she saves the Doctor after the monsters turn on him. Now completely unafraid to use a gun, Kate kills the attacking Zygons like the one she did that tried to kill her in the town. Kate travels back to the Black Archive where the Doctor makes her an ambassador for humanity in an emotional negotiation. It's here the Doctor lectures Bonnie with Zygon and Kate, both of whom are set on more drastic measures. Learning the Doctor's pain and listening to his reasoning, Kate decides to stand down. After this, we wouldn't hear much about Unit for some time, but things were changing behind the scenes. On New Year's Eve 2019, when the 13th Doctor chases down a Dalek, we hear that Unit has indeed been shut down, allegedly due to budget cuts because of Brexit. Typical. UK Security Helpline, this is Polly, how can I help? I'm sorry, what? UK Security Helpline. How can I help? Oh, I'm so sorry. Unit operations have been suspended pending review. All unit operations were put on hold following financial disputes and subsequent funding withdrawal by the UK's major international partners. You kidding? It wouldn't be until the 13th Doctor's final series that we learn what had been happening behind the scenes. The Grand Serpent had travelled through time to Unit's inception and, over the decades, wormed his way into possession of power by killing those who discovered his true alien form. In 2017, he told Kate that Unit would be winding down, but Kate boldly threatens him like an absolute queen. This was a bad idea, but because when she returns home, it backfires and her house is blown up in her face. With no other option, Kate contacts Osgood claiming she has to go dark. By 2020, Kate is still in hiding, with only minimal control over some small remnants of Unit. She was spotted at Sarah James Memorial Service and thought the trickster at the event. She and her small team of experts also began working on fixing a time fracture at a black site in London. By the way, if you played Doctor Who Time Fracture, what did you think of it? Kate continues working in secret. Eventually, she meets the 13th Doctor during the events of Flux, where she's been leading the human forces against the invading Sontarans. With some help from Inson V. Vinda, she traps the Grand Serpent in exile by sending him through one of the doors in the Williamson Tunnels under Liverpool. This particular door led to a ruthless punishment, which he definitely deserved. Saying goodbye to the Doctor, she jokes that she hopes he'll never see her again in the nicest way possible, of course. The paths would cross again in 2022, when multiple strange and connected incidents began to manifest around the world. Kate had begun rebuilding Unit and had hired two new freelancers the Doctor's old companions, Tegan and Ace. Kate explains that she wants to bring in people who can defend Earth from personal experience. Upon capturing the Master, who was behind the unexplained events, he was locked up. But this is the Master, and of course, he had a plan. Using an army of Cybermen, led by Ashad, the lone Cybermen, he makes his escape, and Kate has to initiate a lockdown of the Unit HQ to contain the Cyber Threat. Once the Cybermen find Kate, they corner her and she stands her ground and offers her knowledge of Earth's security to the Cybermen to buy more time. This saves her life, but only for a moment, as she's marched off to be converted into a Cyberman. When she reaches the conversion chamber, she's forced into the chair and the conversion begins. Thankfully, Tegan managed to stop it by completing a mission and flattening Unit HQ. The last time we see Kate on screen, she's present at the companion meeting where the Doctor's friends meet up to discuss their adventures. We don't know what Kate is up to, but it could be that she's planning to recruit new blood for Unit. Okay, so we know Unit will return in the 60th anniversary specials, taking on Beat the Meep and the Wrath Warriors. But does this mean we might see Kate Stewart once again? Since she's the boss, might she be around to give orders and meet the 14th version of a Doctor? It does look like Unit have taken more of a military approach since we last saw them. The soldiers have high-powered weapons when they're fighting aliens in the street. Such as, it leaves a question, has Kate changed her mind and maybe units under the command of somebody else. 
We don't know where Kate's adventures will take her or not, but one thing is certain. She's been officially announced for season 14 and has been on set. Gemma Redgrave has some scenes with Millie Gibson's Ruby Sunday in January. That's not all. We can only guess what it might look like, but rumours of a unit spin-off series are still circling, which means there's a very high chance we're going to see a lot more of Kate Lethbridge-Stewart in the near future. Let us know what you think in the comments section below, and if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Doctor Who news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Tide Essential. You can follow us on social media for daily updates on the Doctor Universe. That's it from Tide Essential, I've been Jack, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.